Welcome to the Royal Kitchens at Kew, untouched for 200 years, now brought back to life and open to the public for the very first time. A unique survival. They were used to cook the meals for King George III, and we've taken three Georgian recipes and adapted them just enough for your modern kitchen. On the 6th of February, 1789, George III was considered well enough to eat with a knife and fork once again, after one of his well-known periods of illness. These are some of the dishes that were served to him on that very day. This is a rich chocolate custard tart. Chocolate was as popular 200 years ago as it is today but this dish is unusual as it was normally a drink. Chocolate bars were still many years away. For the pastry, you'll need 100 grams of butter, 200 grams of plain flour, some salt and some water. And for the filling, you'll need 75 grams of chocolate, six egg yolks, a tablespoon of rice flour, one pint of cream, quarter pint of milk and some sugar. You can download the recipe from georgiancookery.com. To make the case, you'll need any high butter pastry, like short crust. Rub the butter into the flour, add a bit of salt, and then when it's fully rubbed in, just put some water to it to make it up into a really nice smooth paste. You can make your own or buy some ready-made. So you just push it together and then roll it out to about two or three millimeters thick and then cut it to fit your tart case. Now you'll be using a tin. The Georgians use tins or rings to hold the side of their tarts up. I'm showing you how it was done by hand as well. Blind bake the case for about 20 minutes in a moderate oven. Blind baking is without the creamy filling. Now whilst this is in the oven, make the filling. First of all, chop the chocolate into very small chunks. And then mix the rice flour with the milk. This will stop it going lumpy. And then it mixes easier into the cream. And then boil for about 15 minutes to make it thicker. These might look like normal pans, but they're actually tin lined copper. Very efficient at conducting heat. In fact, the best restaurants still use these today. You can see an amazing selection of authentic Georgian cookware if you visit. And now we'll separate some eggs, six in all. And now beat them and add the sugar. And then once it's done, pour a little of the cream mix over the beaten eggs. And then put the scalded eggs back into the rest of the cream. You return that to the fire for a little minute or two, just to make sure that it's nice and thick. And then take this off the heat and add the chocolate. By now, the case should be brown, but not quite fully cooked. Pour in the mixture and bake this in a moderate oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, or until set in the middle. Just give it a wobble to check. To finish, you'll need to glaze it. So sprinkle it with some sugar to crisp the top. The Georgians would have used a salamander or a shovel that's red hot from the fire. But there again, you could use your grill or a domestic blowtorch. Then leave the tart to cool. Georgian chocolate tart. You can serve it with some cream or some ice cream on top if you like. For more Georgian cook along videos, to download these recipes, and to find out about visiting these unique surviving kitchens for yourself, visit georgiancookery.com.